One year ago, I created this, a Minecraft computer that can actually run programs. It wasn't that powerful, the most it could really do was bounce a ball around or make some Fibonacci numbers, but I was still proud of it, because it took a lot of work to make. So much work that after I finished, I told myself I'd never make a Minecraft computer again. They just take a lot of effort, they're complicated, and I thought that making games was a better fit for my channel. But over the past year, my opinion on redstone computers has slowly changed. Maybe because I've seen my friends make computers that run Doom, or even Minecraft in Minecraft, or maybe it's because my senior project in school was to make a computer in Verilog. Either way, I've just felt way more interested in computers recently, and I thought it was finally time to make a better one. So a few months ago, I set out to upgrade this computer with one simple goal. Make it powerful enough to run Tetris. My thought process was that if it could run Tetris, then it could probably run a lot of other cool games too, because Tetris is pretty complex. And maybe, if all goes well, I could run all my previous games on the same redstone computer. So what problems did the first computer have that stopped it from running Tetris? The first and most obvious problem was memory. This computer only had 192 bytes of memory. Not kilobytes, literal bytes. 64 for data and 128 for the program. To even store all the Tetris pieces and all their different rotation states, you need somewhere around 42 bytes, which leaves only 22 for everything else. So in the new computer, the first thing I did is I upgraded every single component that had to do with memory. The data memory went from 64 to 256 bytes, which allowed me to store way more data and work with more of it at a time. The program memory also improved, going from 128 to 2048 bytes, which allowed me to make programs 16 times longer. And the number of registers went from 8 to 16, which just continued to make everything easier. Another problem with the first computer was the output devices. This computer only had an 8x8 screen, which again works great for bouncing a ball around, but it's not really enough space for Tetris. So I made a new 32x32 screen, a character display, and a number display. This gave me plenty of space for games, and the ability to write things like you win, you lose, or whatever I want. On top of that, I put in the ability to not only write to the screen, but read from it as well. So you can basically use the screen as even more memory. And this property actually ended up being super useful when programming games. For example, if the screen looks like this, and I want to check if the Tetris piece hit the ground, I can just read the literal pixels underneath it. If any of them are one, then it hit the ground. The next big problem wasn't really a redstone one, it had to do with programming the computer. If you've done programming before, you might have written some code in a high level language like C++ or Python. But under the hood, a computer doesn't actually understand those languages. Before a program reaches a processor, it gets converted to an assembly program, which you can think of as a list of instructions for the computer to execute. But not every computer understands the same instructions. For example, Intel processors run on the x86 instruction set, but M3 Apple processors run on ARM, a different instruction set. And Minecraft processors, well, it's up to you to decide which instruction set to run on. You can design it to run on x86 or ARM, or you can make an entirely new instruction set and design it to run on that. So when I made this first computer, I chose the last option. I made a simple custom instruction set with just 16 different kinds of instructions. Here's a super simple program written in that language that calculates 2 plus 2. Then I made a Python program to convert this custom language to a Minecraft schematic of barrels. And once that was pasted into the computer, I could actually run the program. And that's all great, but the problem was, this language didn't have a way to make reusable code. In a high level language, you can make reusable code with a function. A function allows you to just describe code once, and then call the function whenever you want to use it. But my language had no way to do this nicely. It was too simple. So for the new computer, I designed an entirely new instruction set, which had two brand new instructions, call and return. I'll explain more about how these exactly work in my upcoming videos, but the point is, having reusable code made programming so much easier. The final problem with this computer was that there was no great way to test things. Debugging assembly programs is already really hard, so the fact that I had to run them on a Minecraft computer to test them just made the process even more tedious. So I hired my friend Edo to make an entire emulator for the computer. Now to run a program, you don't even have to launch Minecraft. All you have to do is drag it in here, press start, and you can see what it does. You can also step line by line, change the speed, and view all the memory contents as it's running. Once this was finished, I released it in my Discord, and a bunch of people made their own programs, which I was super happy to see. Huge thank you to Edo for all your work here, this made debugging programs a million times easier. So yeah, those were just a few of the biggest problems I ran into when upgrading the computer. Overall, it turned into a completely new project with brand new problems of its own. But eventually, after a few months, I got everything working, and this is what the new computer looks like. Let's see what it can do.
Obviously this computer took a ton of work and explaining all of it in one video would be impossible. So instead, I'm gonna make an entire series about it. From building components to assembly programming, I'm gonna be showing you all the ins and outs of redstone computing. I really hope you guys are as excited as I am. And as you guys probably know, videos on building computers don't get as many views as flashy games, but luckily this entire series has been sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant is the absolute best way to learn about all things math, data analysis, programming, and AI. They have thousands of interactive lessons and each one will help you learn by doing. Instead of memorizing things, you'll play with concepts hands-on, a method proven to be six times more effective than watching lectures. On top of that, you'll build critical thinking skills through problem solving. So while you'll gain knowledge for sure, you'll also become a better thinker. With just a few minutes a day, Brilliant can help you create a powerful learning habit. Plus, their lessons are available 24-7, whenever you have time. If you want to get your feet wet with computers before my upcoming series, then check out the course How Technology Works. It lets you play around with transistors and explores other cool technology too, like GPS systems. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash mapatwings or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. 